welcome to our podcast, The Weekly Chatter. So here we have Kak Putri as a guest today. And here I'm with my friend. Uh, guys, please introduce yourself. My name is Aina Yandara. My name is Trisno Widanti. My name is Vina. And Putri. Putri Khoya. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so um, here we have a topic uh, about self-improvement. So it's like an interesting topic because um, here we have Kak Putri will share about insightful story about herself and her journey. So um, without further ado, let's get started. Well, Kak Putri, thank you so much for attending this event, <laughs> this podcast, I mean. And um, could you please tell us more about yourself, about your um, maybe university and then uh, major. Okay, um, so a little bit about myself. So my name is Putri Khoidia. You can mm-hmm. tell I am also Indonesian, but I'm also Pakistani. Um, I am studying at San Francisco State University in San Francisco, studying chemistry and uh, minoring in holistic health. So oh, okay. yeah. Yes. <laughs> so um, what are you passionate about? So in terms of like life, I think I'm really, really passionate about like human connections and how human make and maintain those connections, you know? So um, I mean, besides like school and like, you know, chasing your goals and everything, but I think it always goes back to like human connections. So that's my biggest passion. Is it the chemical related at home? I don't, <laughs> I don't think about chemistry all the time, <laughs> but if you wanted to say it's like the bond of an atom, yeah, because we all made yeah. atoms, right? Yeah. So I guess, I guess that does make sense, yeah. Have you ever feel stressed about your study or something? Oh yeah, I feel like stress is part of life, right? Everyone's stressed mm-hmm. about something. It's just what makes life exciting, stress. Yeah. So, yeah. How you come with the stress when you are bored? Me? How, I... I like to just, well, first it's a lot of like self, like explanation thing that I do where I will just have to sit down with myself. Just kind of remembering that like, you know, everything happens for a reason, every failures, every mistakes, um, it happens for a reason. You know, even stress part, like when you're stressed, it actually like motivates you to also do better, right? It's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, so it just all always goes back to like as long as I try my best, you know, everything's just gonna happen. Well, the universe gonna make yeah. it happen. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, I still stress though. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, just yeah. to, like try it's like best. something inevitable, right? Yeah, it's like you know, just gonna go with the flow mm-hmm. is what it is. Do you ever feel like uh, kind of sad or maybe homesick? Oh yeah, I mean. Um, I, I get sad a lot. Actually. <laughs> I mean, that's just you know that's just how life is, right? I'm actually a very um, sensitive person, so I, I I overthink a lot about life and everything. But that also goes back to like always just believing that like life will happen the way it's meant, like it's just meant to be. Um, and like in terms of like being homesick, I don't live that far from home actually. Like my parents live in a different town. It's about maybe like an hour and a half from San Francisco. And when I do get homesick, I, I go home. Like, it's easy, I just take the train or I like drive, you know, to go home. But I also believe that home is also, goes back to that human connection thing, you know? It's not a place for me, it's more like the people. So sometimes I feel homesick in terms of my friends. Like, you know, they live far away and everything like that. So sometimes they visit me or I go visit them. That's got rid of the homesickness. So yeah, I think, I think that's my thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what is your personal struggle in new environment? Do you have that, or in, do you feel like that? In a new environment, um, a lot of like the personal struggle would probably be um, my identity because I do express myself as a, you know, visibly hijabi Muslim woman, mm-hmm. and that to also a woman of color. So it's. Um, I think in a lot of spaces that are not very welcoming of like new like, like you know new people or people that don't look like them, it, it's a lot of like struggle, especially in like certain like areas in America or certain like European countries. Um, before going there, you would already probably feel like anxious that like mm-hmm. oh you know they don't 
uh, particularly my Muslim, let alone like Muslim women who visibly look Muslim, you know, in the hijab and everything. Um, so that's always a struggle for me, I think, in every new environment, is just making sure that um, I feel welcome and that um, I make the right, like, space for myself and meeting the right people too. So, yeah. You know, it's life, struggles everywhere. <laughs> So what are the biggest goals and dreams in your life that you want to achieve? I feel like we all have a lot of goals, right? Mm -hmm. we, we all do, we always feel like we don't have enough time for all those goals. But I like to just kind of condense it to obviously like my personal like career goal is to get into like the medical field. Like I, I love medicine, like the medicine and just like working with people. Um, but also my own personal goal down in the future, I don't know when, is to live a very sustainable life. Um, I don't know how to farm or garden, but I would want to have my own farm one day. <laughs> um, I want to grow my own food, you know, like fruits and vegetables. Um, I want to be able to have like, just a, a small farm. I don't even want it to be big, just enough that me and my family can like survive mm -hmm. off. And just, yeah, just living that slow, sustainable life, Trying not to stress as much. Yeah, this whole life, you know, on the countryside, like a farmhouse. So which the uh, country that your farm will be? Well, I don't know which country <laughs> I want to go to yet. Maybe the one that I can afford. I don't know. I, I think I want I want it somewhere where it's obviously it's, um, where I'm at most ease. Mm -hmm. And I feel like right now I'm at that stage in my life where um it goes back to like there's really no home, right? For me, it's like the people. So I have like people in a lot of different places who I consider a piece of home for me. So home is like everywhere, but in terms of like settling down in the future and just like, you know, building a farm is not like a one night thing. I have mm -hmm. to like, so that has to, um, that has to be what, you know, it's like, yeah, it's a long journey. So I'm not gonna like think about it much, but I definitely want somewhere where there are, good options of fruits yeah. and like vegetables. <laughs> Maybe Indonesia, you know, it's a good option. It's a nice tropical country, so yeah. yeah. So, so far, do you think you're already, already living in the life that you, you want to be, like your dreams? Right now? Well, if we're talking about the dreams that I had earlier, you know, medical field and then like living sustainable life, I'm not there yet. That is also a dream, right? But I think I like to believe that I, I live my life right now the most I can make it. So if I keep thinking that like, oh, I'm gonna live my best life once it's like my dream life, then I'll never be satisfied. Mm -hmm. So just trying to be satisfied with what I have right now, making the most of what I have right now, I think that is actually a form of dream because I think when I was younger, I dream of a life where I'm in control, right? Yeah. Like, I'm in charge of my life, I can go wherever I want, I like study what I want, you know, that is a dream. Sometimes we think so far ahead that we forgot this like dreams we had when we were younger. Yeah. We're living yes. the life right now, right? Yeah. So I, I like to think that I'm living my dream life right now too, and also will continue pursuing my other dreams. I think, yeah. So you will consider in the present right now? Yeah, I think it's really important to like really live in the present because when you focus so much in the past, you're just regretting a lot, right? And then when you focus so much in the future, you're anxious a lot. And between those two, you just forget the present that is a present to you, right? Like it's the present of life. And you just tend to forget about it. And sometimes when you just think about the little things, you will appreciate it better and actually reduce stress level, <laughs> like, you know, so, um, yeah, thinking about the present and appreciating it, I think it's like, and for you know, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, I try, I try to think very positively, but, so what do you think the most important thing in your life today? I think uh, the most important thing to my life um, is what I'm passionate about, is human connections, the connections I have with my family, the connections I have with, like, my friends, I think, you know, having the right people in your life, um, can help you grow so much and also you just you just feel at home right everywhere you're with them and that's really really important is to feel comfortable with those people um, it may not be everyone in your family you know um, 
but for me especially it's like my parents are very important to me i think i wouldn't be where i am right now without them that's my like for sure you yeah. know um and in terms of like my really close friends too mm -hmm. they've helped me like in this in, in my journey right when you enter like your teenage years and then you enter adulthood it's really important to have those small yeah. circle of friends because then you support them they support you you grow together it's nice so i really appreciate all these like connections i have in my life because without them i, I would i wouldn't be where i'm at right now mm -hmm. friends and family included yeah so have you ever dealing with like uh, toxic people some kind of yeah yeah yeah, I think we all we all do, right? Toxic people is like they come and go, but sometimes it's also it's not that they are toxic, but they come from a toxic environment yeah. that cause them to be toxic yeah. to others. Um, and it's sometimes it's um, it's sad, but you always have to just prioritize yourself. So when you come across people who are like toxic, in my in my like experiences, every time I've come across like toxic situations, I am very um, straightforward about my boundaries. You know, I don't because I, I like to keep my peace. Um, if if the situations that they bring upon my life is toxic, I would have a conversation first, see like what's the cause of this, and if we can solve it. But if not, then um, they're not welcome in my life. It's that simple. My life is my peace, um, and I'm not gonna have you know an external toxic like energy. It's just not worth it. So yeah, just tell them they can come back next time when they're not that toxic anymore. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that those toxic people can influence your life? If so you far? if you make if you let them is what it is, right? Anything in life, if you let it happen to you, it will happen to you in a way. It, it, it also same thing with like toxic people. If you don't set the boundaries ahead of time, they will have like some kind of influence in your life. Um, it also just like really depends. Sometimes it's through their words, right? Sometimes it's through their actions. Um, but it's clearly just, I think I really believe in just setting up boundaries really ahead of time. Do not even let that toxicity to enter your life. Um, but sometimes it's not easy, right? And when it does enter your life, it's to like clear it up as soon as you can so that it doesn't take up so much of your like positive energy because then it's like, you know, you're just wasting your life, like your life at that point, right? Your time, your energy, your mental health, really. So, um, how do you get rid of toxic people? I mean, there's many ways, <laughs> but it's I think um, it's just like definitely like close the gate to your life. Mm -hmm. Just don't let them enter. Talking about mental health, how do you think about self love? Is it important to you? Oh yeah, I think self love is like it's what we all need, right? It's Without self-love, no matter how much love others give you, it will never be enough because you're still craving that love that is like empty on the inside. I think self-love is what like makes us us, you know, appreciating who we are internally, um, working with like our own hearts and mind will just create such a difference in your life compared to when you like pretty much have a form of self-hate, you know? Um, sometimes you don't do it on purpose, sometimes it's because of your environment or you're not surrounded by the right people that causes you to have like internalized self-hate. Um, and you can tell the quality of life when you have self-hate and when you have self-love, right? So self-love is a huge, huge factor in having a very good quality life. Because with it, you can pretty much do anything. So the key to a happy life starts with self-love. So do you think it is also part of self-improvement? Yes, because it will improve it will improve you like obviously mentally, even spiritually, emotionally even, right? When you have like a lot of self-love for yourself, it will improve your connections with other people. Because you know, the energy you give out to the world attracts those twin people yeah. too. Mm -hmm. When you have so much love to give to, you will attract people who also have so much love. So your circle will be that circle of growth, you know? Um, so it improves your quality of life, it improves your connections, it just improves your life and well-being overall. So definitely, the more you self-love you have, the better your life is. It's my understanding, yeah. Well, for to your study, I want to ask about what's a good time to keep, keep in your study. 
like my study, yeah. like the credit that you do <laughs> to get to track your study? I, the way I do things, well, let me clarify first. I am not a perfect student whatsoever. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I procrastinate. Um, sometimes, you know, I forgot there are some assignments and I have to do them last minute. So all those happen, right? I'm just a normal uni student like everyone yeah. else. Um, but what really helped me was um, keeping organized. I, I had the tendency to like forget things. Mm -hmm. So I like to have notes on my laptop. I have notes on my phone. And I also write with sticky notes. And I also have like a little whiteboard in my room. Yeah. So yeah, I have to just write them in multiple places because whenever I see them, whether I see them on the screen on, on my phone mm -hmm. or on my laptop, um, it will remind me and it will help me to get organized. And I like them as a kind of like a list, a to-do list, you know? Um, also, give yourself rewards. So I would like get myself like a nice cup of coffee afterward if I, you know, finish like all my tasks and everything like that, or cook something yummy, or just just a form of rewards, and that really helps me in just like stay motivated um, and study with friends too. A lot of my friends don't have the same major as me, but even then, we still would go to like the library together or like bookstore together and just like study and. Yeah, it helps. It gives you motivated. Yeah. So come back to your study. Uh, you said that you want to be a, a doctor. The yes. But uh, you choose chemistry major, right? Well, in um, so in the United States, I think the education system is a bit different than uh, a lot of like Asian or even European countries. Mm -hmm. In a lot of European and like Asian countries, you can go to medical school right after high school. Mm -hmm. It's like what five years, some six years. In the United States, um, you need a bit, like a bachelor degree. So you can get your bachelor degree in pretty much anything, but science related is like highly recommended, you know, um, because you're going into a medical field, like science based field. Um, after you get your bachelor, then you can apply for medical school. That's why I am currently studying chemistry because my end goal is the medical field. But in order to get that, I do need to get my bachelor. It didn't take a long time. It does. It does. Oh, wow. um, so like for bachelor, um, it took me five years. I'm on my fifth year right now. Um, I'll be graduating in spring. And then afterward, if I directly apply to medical school, then that will take about four years of medical school. Um, a lot of people take a gap year or two. I personally do that myself just so that I can gain like clinical experiences. Mm -hmm. It's very common among like medical students in the United States to take the extra time to go get some clinical experiences or to like get a master degree before they go for medical school. So there's there's options, there's many different ways, but yeah, it takes um takes a long time. <laughs> yeah. Like almost nine years. It could be yeah. more, yeah. It could be more. I would say eight years is like the average, right? Because four years bachelor, four years medical. But uh, a lot of people do have like a year or two years in between, or even more. It's really up to you. It's your life, you know. Mm -hmm. It also to you. Yeah. So, uh, what the biggest uh, thing that you learn from your mistakes? Mistakes, um, well, like I mentioned earlier, I do believe mistakes are a part of life. It's a learning process, right? It's not necessarily a bad thing. So what I learned about like making mistakes is that it's okay to make mistakes. That's how you learn. Um, it's just another stepping stone in your progress. It's not, it's not a bad thing as well. It helps me to um, think about it in a more positive light. And if I don't make mistakes, I feel like there, it's not actually like a form of growth. Mm -hmm. Mistakes is what make growth taste sweet, right? Because when you see all these mistakes that you made, you're like, but then you actually made it, you see that like, oh my god, it all happens for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes through those mistakes, you gain other opportunities or you learn other things. And that just makes you overall uh, more capable, I would say. Yeah. So mistakes are not necessarily a bad thing. So um, many people say that medical students have tough kind of schedule and stressful things. <laughs> uh, so from your perspective, do you think that after you enter the medical school, um, do you think it shape your life into a better person? Um, I, I've also heard the same thing. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> I'm not in medical school yet. 
But considering a lot of my friends who already are in medical school, it is a very hard um, thing to do, right? It, it requires a lot of time, it requires a lot of energy, um, dedications and everything. I, I don't know how will that change my life, if I'm being very honest, um, because I'm not there yet, right? I like to think um, that sometimes like things that hasn't happened yet, it's better not to stress about it, because then you're stressing about it two times. You're stressing about it now, and then you're stressing when it actually happens. <laughs> so, <laughs> because it hasn't happened yet, um, I like to think that it will be a good thing, because if it's happening in my life, it, it must be something, right? It must be a good thing. If I made it into medical school later, then I'll take that as a sign that life is going well for me, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and if I don't, then I'll just take that as a sign that life wants a better thing for me that is not medical school. It could be other yeah. things. Um, so hopefully whatever it's going to be, medical school or not, my life will just change for the better. Yeah. So far to this day, um, do you think what's the difference between you in the past and you no. today? Um, it's very different. I feel like if you talk to younger me, maybe not long ago, maybe seven years ago, me, I probably wouldn't talk like this. <laughs> I was very, I was a very stressful child. Um, you know, teenage years is where the year where you really wanted to really find who you are, right? Mm -hmm. I think we were really searching for that like sense of identity. Um, so that's one thing. I definitely know who I am now, <laughs> thankfully. Um, really, really confident in who I am and what I want to do in life. And the amount of self-love I have to, I think I've definitely increased. Like, a younger me tried to have that sense of self-love, but it's a lot of that, like, you know, fake it till you make it thing, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, yeah, but now I feel like I don't have to fake it. Like, I, I know that self-love is real, and I know I have it for me. So, yeah, huge, huge change, like, definitely from, like, past me and, like, present me. But it's, again, it, it's actually all for the better. I know my life quality is much better than what it was last year, than what it was seven years ago or ten years ago even. So, yeah. It's how do you cultivate that self-love? I don't think, <laughs> I don't think there's, like, a simple answer to that. Um, but for me, what really helped was um, realizing that life is a good thing, right? Living is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And having that connections that you want to like keep, like I love being surrounded by people. Mm -hmm. I think that's like really helped me. And like, it helped me to like really appreciate that people also love being surrounded by me. So having internalized self-hate, it started to fade away because I was like, why am I measuring myself into something so small when uh, other people think like so highly of me, you know, I need to start thinking so highly of myself. And it also helps me to think that I shouldn't depend on their, you know, opinions. Because I got lucky that people surround me have a very, you know, positive opinions about myself. But not everyone is like that, right? And that's what causes a lot of us, since we were a kid, to have a lot of internalized self-hate was because our surrounding we're not the right people and then they have like state or influence or do things that really causes that internalized self-hate, right? Like about how we look, about how yeah. we talk, about how we walk even. Um, so it's just really, I'm learning a lot about like myself that God made me the way I am and that's for a reason. Mm -hmm. And you know, he loves me so much to like create me the way I am this way, then I should too as well, right? And my parents love me for who I am as well, so why is it so hard for me to like love me for who I am? So it's, it's it started from there, and then it really just surrounding myself with like like-minded people, like all my friends, we all, you know, really, really um, big into like self-love and just like healing and everything. Yeah, it's a, it's a form of healing is what it is, mm -hmm. right? Um, reads a lot, I read a lot about like self-love, I read a lot about like body positivity, um, acceptance, you know, those really helps. But it, it is not a, it's not an easy journey. Setting up boundaries too, have to set a lot of boundaries with sometimes like, you know, relative who are not necessarily yeah. the best people in our <laughs> life. Um, but it's like that talks to people, you know, I mean, that is just like putting those boundaries because for me, like, preserving my self-love is more important than like 
mm -hmm. letting those people in simply because they're blood related. Yeah. You know. So the key is people's opinion. We cannot control them. So exactly. Them. Exactly. Exactly. You can't control people's opinion, but you can control your opinion of yourself. So just keeping that like internally is that what I say to myself matters. What I think about myself also matters. So always think very highly and positively of yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's all start with our perspective, right? Yeah, exactly. It just starts from in here and for ourselves. So when you were sad or like unhappy, who cheers you up? Um, <laughs> I think it's really important to, at least for myself, mm -hmm. is that I also rely on myself on how I can help myself when I'm not in the best mood. So that always goes back to self-care. So I, I love to have self-care when it's just a me time, um, reading books that I like, I mean, reading memes. Like memes are fun, you know? <laughs> you know, it gives you serotonin, yeah. watching like funny videos, it gives you serotonin. Um, technology has really helped a lot in terms of like self-care in my opinion. Um, so when I'm feeling like sad or like I'm happy, I try to first see how I can fix it. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a simple, you know, mood swing, bad mood, it usually easily fixed with like a little bit of like serotonin. Um, even meditation, like yoga too, that has helped me a lot in the past as well. When all those things still didn't help, then I would like reach out to like my parents, especially my mom, you know, I'd be like, okay, I'm sad, like, talk to me. <laughs> so sometimes just talking to her really helps. Um, and then sometimes I also reach out to friends, you know, just like, and because you, you, we all have those like very close friends where we can just be like, talk to me, like I need, I need friends right now, yeah. you know, like I just need like comfort. You don't even need one, just like someone to be with. And that usually just helps, so that's what I do, yeah. And you have someone who inspired you the most? Inspiration to me, I think it really comes to like, seeing like, I definitely do think like woman is the biggest inspiration in the world. I, I, I don't have specific person, mm -hmm. but um, I always see how like, especially like ethnic women, um, I was thinking about this a lot, like after we're talking about this question, is that mm -hmm. I really um, think of ethnic women who migrated to like a whole new place, you know, a whole new environment of how much change while still preserving their culture, mm -hmm. you know, raising their children with those values and everything like that, those are, inspiration i feel like people tend to like forget that those are not an easy step you know mm -hmm. and a lot of like a lot of these women um i feel like they they don't get the spotlight that they deserve i would like look at my own mother or my friends moms you know mm -hmm. and out there like back at states and how much it, it probably took out of them to leave their you know homeland to leave their home and come to like a whole new land with those set of um, values and beliefs so that they can like raise their children like accordingly as well and also still preserve those like the language and everything so i think um yeah like just women like so powerful you know like i feel like we go through so much and then we still like we still made it out like you know and it's just um and a lot of women who also juggle so many roles too you know like also, society does not make it any easier either for us to juggle those roles. There's a lot of like expectations mm -hmm. for women, um, but we, we also really met and those expectations and even beyond. Like we are so capable of like so many things that just being with like my like girlfriends, with like you know my mom, with like my aunts, my grandmas, it's just being that circle of like fem family. But such a strong like feminine energy that I know they've done so much in life and I can do the same. It's such an inspiration. So yeah, it's like every time I like need a little bit of inspiration, I just think of like, you know, my grandma made it like all this thing in life. My mom is the same, like so it's like my aunts, like even my friends, like getting inspirations from them is just really it's it's needed. It's yeah. needed, yeah. Now you're my inspiration. Uh, <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> All right. So, what kind of advice uh, do you think that you would give to yourself in the past year? 
in the past year, me was definitely to not stress as much, right? Um, I did mention that I was a very stressed child, um, and that to like just let the water flow, you know, try my best, it's just you know, just do your best and leave the rest to God is what it is, right? As long as you try your best, um, it's not worth stressing about it so many times. It's you're just gonna stress again about it again later on, right? And also just like starting to really appreciate yourself. Um, I tend to overlook that a lot. I think when I was younger, you know, mentioning the amount of self-love. So um, don't stress so much. Start loving yourself, you know, just live life to the fullest, the best you can. Um, things will happen when it's meant to happen. Mm -hmm. So what are you grateful for uh, being uh, born in a mixed family culture? I think I'm really grateful. Okay, people always say this, but I am really grateful for the food. I think I got really lucky, right? Um, like rich. Yeah, it's both countries and cultures are very, very rich in their um, diversity, like mm -hmm. food-wise too. Yeah. And so it's like you know, there's being, like a lot of spices. Yeah, it's like it's nice. Like when I want something. Like I can relate to both cultures, and I think I really, really like that, and it really helps me with like the human connections part too. Because in the United States, like at my university, also especially like where I work as well, is that I work with a lot of students from different backgrounds, mm -hmm. um, and because I came from a multiple backgrounds, it really helps me understand so many different people with so many different perspectives. Um, I can always learn more and everything, but like it helps me have that kind of base of understanding that people from different cultures might think about things differently, you know. And it's not necessarily a bad thing; it's just different. Different does not mean bad. Um, so having those like mixed understanding, like you know, multiple understanding in my heart and in my mind, um, it just helps me create a more rich, meaningful connections. Um, also great food, like I said again, and also introducing those like cultures and food to like other people too that are interested. I have a lot to offer, you know, like when people ask me like, okay, do you want to learn more about like South Asian or Southeast Asian culture? Like, I, I know both, so. Yeah. I think that is also one of the privileges that we have. Yes, 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 it's, it really is. It's, um, well, it's, it's a nice, because then I also um, can use both cultures um, it's a big form of an identity of mine, right? Um, I claim it like highly that I am Indonesian and Pakistani, and I'm also like an American too. That's another part, big chunk of like my identity. And um, yeah, it's it's. I, I don't know how to say it, that it is a privilege, but I I do believe that um, it's it's a nice thing to have. I would say I don't know if it's a privilege if I'm being honest because like. What privilege does it really come? I mean, I can claim the culture, which is nice, right? Like, um, you know, when people like mention something a little bit Indonesian, I'm like, I'm Indo, you know? Yeah. And when people a little bit like Pakistani, I'm like, I'm also Pakistani. So it's like, um, you get to claim a lot of things. I guess that's a privilege. I don't know, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's nice. It's nice. Yeah. Sometimes uh, knowing about the culture can make us like more closer with the people. We yes. Can. Yes, exactly. So, um, yeah, just you know, more, the more you know, the more you can yeah. share is what it is, right? So, yeah. So, what are bad habits that you want to get? Yeah, <laughs> you have to get rid of it. Bad habits, let me see. Uh, <laughs> actually, um, I think also goes back to like being students too. I like procrastinating a lot. Yeah, we um, all procrastinate. Yeah, I feel like it's <laughs> And um, I think that's always a habit that I, I've, I've always wanted to like change. Mm -hmm. um, I think definitely certain things I do in life makes it better now having that to do list, you know, having just more like um, notes. Notes, yeah, practical things to do. Um, I am not the worst procrastinator, but in my mother's eyes, I am. <laughs> um, but that's maybe the one habit that I would like to change because. I think when I procrastinate, I do increase that level of stress that I'm trying to avoid, right? So breaking the habit of like procrastinating, I, I think would also help me in reducing the amount of stress. Yeah. So is there any quotes that you really love? Maybe you want to share it with us? I I do. Yeah. Let's see if I remember <laughs> like the like the line. 
But um, there's this one quote, I saw it on like Instagram, but this was like years ago. Um, I don't even know who, who said it or anything, but it says that like, um, every plant has their own requirement to grow. So do people, you know, some plant require more sunshine, less mm -hmm. sunshine, more water, less water, wet soil, like dry soil, you know. So are people, we require different environments to grow. So I think that that is like, um, has been my favorite quote like for a while now. Um, I share that with like my students all the time. I share it with my friends too sometimes when we need a little bit of inspiration, you know. So yeah, that is my favorite quote. I don't know who said it. It means like we shouldn't compare ourselves. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like you can say it that way too. That you, there is no need to compare yourself because your own requirements and like other people's requirements are different. Either way, you'll grow. So, so the way we love them, it really opened up our mind and yeah. it's so inspiring. So, would you recommend us something? Recommend movie that you oh, watch? Oh, or maybe books <laughs> that yeah. help you improve books. your style or something? Or me. Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is mood. Very sad. <laughs> Honestly, movies. Let me see. I don't watch movies like that. If I'm being honest, and reading book wise, I love to read like novels too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're really like life changing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the most recent books that I read that I think were like really inspiring is called like The 40 Rules of Love. Mm -hmm. It's written by like a Turkish British um, author, Elif Shafak, I believe her last name is. Um, that book. Um, I would say like everyone could read that book. It's really like universally um, implementable. But in terms of like suggestion, you know the one thing that I would suggest that I think is actually um, adaptable for everyone is that changing how your social media looks, not how your not how your like profile looks, but what you follow and what you uh, you know that can bring see. Impact. Yes, because. Just like food goes into your system, yeah. what you see on the social media goes to your brain and to your mind. So I think really changing and filtering out like how your social media looks like will really help you in that like self-love, self-discovery journey. Um, yeah, just really filter your social media. I think we all can do that. That really helps you too in like the self-love part. For the last questions, do you have messages for us? For the three of you guys? Yeah. <laughs> like for everyone. Yeah, for everyone. Yeah, for everyone. <laughs> um, just messages probably um, don't stress so much. Yeah. You know, um, and also like for those who are in school, mm -hmm. um, you'll be okay, you'll make it up, you made it this far, you'll make it further. Um, for those who are at work, um, you know, it's it's a career, you know, make the most out of it. And if you Honestly, if you don't like where yourself at at the moment, then it's okay too. You know, try to find what you like. Mm -hmm. um, but it's okay to change things. Life doesn't have to be linear. Well, thank you so much once again, Kaputri. Thank you, Kaputri. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> How to say thank you in uh, Pakistani language? Shukriya. Shukriya. Um, or you can say Aku Mehrwan. Shukriya. But Shukriya is probably the most. <laughs> yeah. Shukriya. Shukriya. Alright, uh, that's all for our podcast today guys, uh, we hope that you learned something from our discussion today and uh, see you next time, goodbye!